Serge Lama, Kami Memba wa Kami. Lakini namu dunkum ya berkuta. Ge mamaji masi bergatar duniani. Hello, it's uh, Peter again, and today I'm going to give you another little showcase. I mean, this isn't a new one. It's been out for a while, though, but it's just on Steam, and I uh, got it when it was on sale. So, uh, the game's called From Dust, and it's... Uh, yeah, <laughs> I had to pause there, I don't know why. Basically, it's a sort of god simulator where you can move uh, different sorts of elements around the place, rocks and sand, and you're this little wormy thing they call the breath um, and you can you help these little villager dudes build villages which I'm going to demonstrate here by just mousing over and pressing spacebar and they'll just go up and build stuff by playing music which seems to be the mainstay of this game you do everything by building music uh, please excuse me by the way I'm not feeling awesome there's been a bit of a cold going around here around me um, but yes as you can see the, these totem poles they create villages and then Plants sprout out and houses literally come out of the ground. Oh, a tsunami is coming. Well, my village is built, so in three minutes. Yeah, here we are. Hmm. Sorry about that. Um, awesome. So, shaman is warning of a tsunami. Okay, I need to go get that stone of knowledge to be able to repel the water from our village. Which means I need to build a path to get there using earth. Now it's a very simple technique in the game. You left click to gather up stuff, and then you right click to place it. Currently I can only gather up earth. Um, so, there we go. I can only do stuff with sand, and it gets washed away easily. Uh, well, earth and sand are different, but in this game they're pretty much the same. So there we are, now I've built a way across there, and now I need to build another way across. I'm going to do it here. Block this bit off. Um, this is going to be very difficult to do. As you can see, this river... So I'm going to need to build this up high enough that it goes over somewhere else instead of here. So, let's start. You know, it, it really reminds me of when you were younger and you're going off your family day trips and you, you end up <laughs> building these huge dams across rivers just because, well, they're fun to do. Um, it has that quality and I, I really enjoy it because it's, it's a huge sandbox environment which makes it very fun. Um, so now I'm going to call men to come up here and hopefully, so as you can see, the, the path they're going to take, so we'll get that. In. Hopefully before the tsunami hits. I mean, yeah, he's got a kite showing where he is. It'd be nice if we did it before the tsunami hits, or else all these guys would be... Well, they'd be in quite a lot of trouble, to be honest. Um, not entirely sure where the tsunami's going to come from. I guess it would come from out there, somewhere. Yeah, hmm. But yeah, back to the whole review thing that I quite like to do. So far, I've only played a couple missions to this. This is one of the very early ones. I found this really, really enjoying. It's got this sort of subtle aura about the game, which you can really play when you're feeling it. So I think this must be to do with the tribal sounds, the the very singular and original aesthetics, and the the fact that you're literally creating all these things. And a lot of it happens out of, like without of your control. I mean, in some games that can be a real negative, but in this one, because you're just this massive sandbox environment uber dude who can literally change the world, I feel it has a lot of uh, positives and it, it, it can honestly influence the game in really nice ways so so far I'm having to give this a really strong 8 or 9 out of 10 if I did that sort of <laughs> that sort of thing I might bring that later on with the whole stamp of approval because it seems to be a popular trend in uh, gaming environments oh yeah and I can pick up water as well go away water I don't want you I take earth yeah so as you can see, the water did eventually overwhelm my defences over here, which was irritating to say the least. But hopefully, that guy's going to get back to the town before. Oh, that's him there, I think, and he's got the 
knowledge. There we are. So, three, two, one. <laughs> I think I did that just in time, to be honest. Um, yeah. As you can see, the little houses and the people, just the way it looks, just is very, very impressive. And, you know, doing this sort of thing, even that tidal wave, I mean, it's like, I've got graphics set on fairly high, it does look really nice. And it's an indie, it is definitely an indie game. And this effect, I love. They're defending their village by playing music, and it basically just stops the tsunami. So you can control the water to not hurt them. Unfortunately, this does mean the rest of the land, which has been nicely coated in plants and stuff, will suffer. As you can see, yeah. Everything swapped, but to the village. It does look nice. You can't say that doesn't look nice, and it isn't. You can't say it's not impressive. Any game with this much sandbox is always fun. Yeah. So look, I can, I'll show you that I can literally just pop this water here. It'll splash up, and it won't get into the village. Although I did destroy a tree. <laughs> so yeah, fun. There's another tsunami in six minutes, so as I saw, there's another place over here I want to try and get to. That's going to be very difficult to do in time. So, um, basically, the, the concept of the game is you have these loads of different worlds, and um, these worlds are connected by what seems like a massive underground cavern. Um, and this cavern you go through and it takes up to another world and each world seems to be totally wrecked and there's no plant life, no animal life, just water, sand, rock and eventually volcanoes and the rest and basically you just have to build these villages and then you can move on to the next place after all obviously colonizing the, this world now so far I found building pathways instead of trying to block off rivers like that which I've just tried to do you want to really try and be smart and for go away water you want to be try and be really smart with what you do for instance building a path this way into the deep ocean along the edge over here to my base is actually a much smarter move than um okay i can't take it from there then going across land and trying to do it by blo blocking off rivers because blocking off rivers is just going to fill up a lake which will always eventually beat anything you you build so I'm going to quickly try and do this. I mean, I, d I might not have enough time. I think I might have left it a bit too late. Fiddling over here too much. Um, one other thing to note is that the uh, the plants and the rest don't grow on rock. So it is worth leaving earth on top of rock whenever you can find it. Um, because uh, that they can, uh, by, by being smart with that, you can unlock uh, certain bonuses later on in the game. So, um, yeah, it's not, it's not really f tactical thinking plus uh, being just smart with your resources and it's got some, some major and minor, um, major and minor, what's the word I'm looking for, micro and major, micro and, oh, I don't know what the big one, major and micromanaging in it. So for me, it's a good thing, for others it might be an annoyance. Um, the villagers do seem to want to hurt themselves a lot, which can get kind of annoying. Um, no, I'm not going to lie, it can get very annoying. But at the same time, the rest of the game is good enough and just so well built that I'm actually really thoroughly enjoying this. And a bit, I'll happily play this for, for a while. I mean, it's it's one of those games which just has its own unique individual feel. It can't really be compared to much else. And yet it works really well of what it's been designed and built to do. So, in my opinion, I, I would give this a very high rating, and I really would recommend you to try it out. Um, I'm just going to play to the end of this mission, uh, so it's kind of like half a let's play, half a gameplay walkthrough. Let's actually see if my guys can get over there now that I've built this path. Yep, okay, the men are on their way. Hopefully they're going to get there in time before this next tsunami hits. So I'm going to repopulate the next village. So this should be alright. I want to try and rebuild the path here, but if I do that, the water will actually end up overcoming this path. And you really want to try and keep your villages linked if you can. So I'm going to keep this this position just completely empty. Hopefully, this forest will spread on its own. Although I have a, <laughs> I have a horrible feeling that the, this next tsunami is just going to hurt it a lot. Okay, there you are. They're stuck on that cliff, so I'm going to have to really quickly walk, 
try and, you know, make that less of a steep drop. Hopefully that'll do enough. Stop being wimps. There we are, now go. <laughs> Quick. B is better. But yeah, um, the controls are very simple. Left click, hold down to pick up stuff up. Right click to drop it. Um, that's for anything. Uh, what can be annoying is seeing little bits of water. For instance, if I pick that up, trying to get the sand, and I'll pick all this water up. That's just irritating. I mean, it's fun to do, but... So yeah, that's that so far. And my guys are at the village, so they're going to get there in time. That's both the villagers populated. I think there's only two totems in this level. Once we've um, populated both of them, it'll unlock the next one. So I think that was just introducing the concept of massively horrible, destructive, world-based stuff like tsunamis and eruptions, etc. So yeah, while the concept of the game is actually really simple if you think about it it's just a, it is literally a sandbox you pick up sand you put it somewhere else um, but at the same time because you have to look after like kind of babysit this little race of well, natives it just a really good feel it's it, it's a sort of game which genuinely makes you want to help them um, it's not it's where you, you, you do like in black and white you had a, uh, you ended up having <laughs> the kind of the urge to throw people into fires or um, I'm just being an evil person, but this game, without even being guided necessarily or forced, you end up really kind of like caring for the village and wanting to build it up and kind of even um, just making the land better. So let me just read this. Um, cool, we can open up a passageway. Awesome, that's all it said. So that's the passageway there, but as you can see, it's kind of in the middle of the water, so I doubt I'm going to get there before the next tsunami. Um, I want to try and cover as much of the territory in Pam as I can though, because that means I will be able to unlock more stuffs. Um, to be able f for these guys to hold up back the tsunami after the village is beaten, been built, sorry, they need to then transport the technology over. So that's another thing to consider, because it's not just as soon as the village is built, it, um, you're safe. You have to wait for this guy to come over. So I think it should be fine. And as you can see there, um, you can release everything in your breath by holding both buttons at the same time, so... Oh, no, I can't do that, apparently. Hmm, for some reason it wouldn't let me do it there. However, doing this before the tsunami hits probably isn't the best idea, because it's just going to wipe all this away when it arrives. Um, pity. So I want to try and get rid of all this water. Get rid of it so it's not surrounding that totem. There, yeah, I should be fine. There we are. So they're going to be safe for the tsunami that's about to hit. To be honest, I'm, I'm kind of hesitant for doing anything until it hits because, well, there really isn't much point, if I'm honest. <laughs> like, really. Because it's just going to hit and hurt. Yeah, I just wanted to make this water come out because it looks fun and it'll get rid of all this stuff up here. I'm just building up this area, hoping it won't do too much damage when the tsunami hits, because that's it coming now. Boom! And there we go. Uh, it's very satisfying knowing your villages won't get harmed by it, but at the same time it's annoying knowing it's just going to wreck everything else. All this plant life is just going to get... Uh, very much owned. I mean, look at that. Having this village here does disrupt it, though. As you can see, it does have a large effect on the tsunami. It slows it down. It changes the disposition of the water, which will have better effects later on in the match because it will, because it won't be able to hit this, for instance, as much as it would have been into other to otherwise. Having this bastion here will will be helpful. So I'm not even sure if these guys needed that because they probably won't even reach it. Oh well. More trees will be sprouting almost instantaneously afterwards. And there's still green left up here, which is always nice. So here we are. Are they going to need to use it? Yeah, a little bit they will. <laughs> always nice to watch. Playing the little instruments. I have no idea what that is. It looks painful. 
So yeah, that's this level pretty much done, I think, because they are very close to this. If I can just literally build a path between them, I will be fine. It's important to notice that this thing I just covered up, which probably won't come back now. That was silly. You're gonna... Never mind. Um, it probably wasn't even there. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff which I... Oh, that's, that's, that's not nice. This river is going to be very hard to get rid of. I'm almost tempted to build this path again. Yeah, this would be better. Bring it here. Making them come this way seems smarter, in my opinion. Instead of trying to build it across the river, which is just going to build up, build up, and then ruin everything. So, yeah. Uh, that should be fine. Go away. Don't want water. Don't want water. Sand. Oh, go away. I want you to build up this path. There we are, so that should start spreading. Um, I'm kind of hoping that the ground will spread if I cover it like that. It'll get more bushes, etc. More stuff will start spreading around. It'd be nice. So I'm going to quickly do this and before the next one comes and get the men to start transferring to the next place. Apart from that, I think I'm pretty much done. Yeah, and it looks like that river stopped flowing. Uh, no, there's still a little bit. So yeah, is there anything I've missed on this map first? There's no really. I think tab was. No. Cool. Ah, yes, animals. Animals being these weird things. They just turn up and start breeding, etc. Um, yeah. Not gonna lie, they're strange. But uh, I'm quite, I quite like them. <laughs> so they're good. When you when you have enough plants, they'll come and live here. And I suppose that's a good thing, really. Um, I'm guessing everyone in this world is vegetarian and they're all happy hippies. Uh, yeah, happy hippies, awesome phrase. So yeah, as far as um, glitches, I really can't find any so far. I mean, they must have, they've patched the game um, to fix out any release bugs that there were. Sometimes the uh, slopes, etc., for AI can get a little difficult. But to be honest, in my opinion, so far, it's been it's run really well. I've really enjoyed it. So I just I can't give this game enough recommendations. I really hope you try it, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. So. Um, if you like it, subscribe. I'm going to be doing loads more videos, probably more focused towards games that are out, like are not quite coming up yet, um, including a Guns of Icarus Online preview, which I'll be doing in July with hopefully some uh, some detailed gameplay. So, uh, yeah, leave any comments if you feel like it, and I'll see you later.